Hey everybody and welcome back to Critical Crafting. This is Dylan, your crafting DM here. I uh, wanted to talk really quick about where I've been. So it's been a long time since I posted anything and that's because I was hired on as the creative director for the Lost Adventures company. So I've been working on everything from art to writing, um, just the product development for Daniel Herrero of 3D Printed Tabletop and the Lost Adventures Co. And we recently just got finished with this big push and we're now doing pre-orders for the lost dragons book as well as the lost adventures volume one encounter compendium and i wrote a ton for these books there was so many people so many talented artists that worked on these with me um, and i'm super super excited to share them so if you're wondering what the heck has dylan been up to that's kind of what I've been doing, but uh, things are sort of wrapping up, they're ramping up in other ways, and I'm excited to start sharing some more videos. So, without further ado, let's jump into our content for today. So there has been a ton of chatter about Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, and me and some friends are playing through the Strahd campaign, and I was sitting there going, you know, it'd be pretty cool if there was some scatter um, to kind of go with the, the vampire stuff. And I was trying to think of quick and easy, you know, ways to do that. And I came up with these corpse kebabs, which I think are pretty fun. Uh, and in this video today, I'm going to show you how to make these. So the first thing that you're going to need is some dollar store skeletons. There's a link in the description as always for any product I share in this video. Now to make Strat's terrible corpse kebabs. You use some pliers or scissors and snip off the arms and legs, leaving the torso or cutting the head off on your corpses. You can still use the weapons and arms and legs and even the bases for the bottom of this, but the main thing you want is the torso and the skull. I ran to the grocery store and picked up some shish kebab skewers, and this is what I'm going to use as the sort of large, uh, stabby, pokey, mc impaly thingy mahuzits. And we need a hole to go through each of these pieces, so I'm using what's essentially a hot knife to cut into these. Um, you got to be kind of careful because you can burn yourself really easily, so pressing it down instead of holding it is normally a good idea. Crap! I found the trick with this is to let the hot knife do its work. Don't push too hard, just let it slowly sink in. And then, while it's still kind of soft, you can slide your skewer in there. So nice. Now we'll just chop the bottom off to a reasonable height, and we've got our first little skewer. We still have the base, so we can use that as, well, our base. Putting a hole in there with our hot knife, and then using it to hold our little skewer up. As with most cheap crafts, a copious amount of hot glue is required. I like to put it on the top of the hole and then shove my little skewer through. This helps to sort of glue both ends as much as possible. Probably have a little bit that sticks out the bottom, so I like to kind of trim that off and then I'll even take and sand it a little bit. So we looked at torsos and burnt ourselves, so how are we going to do the skull? I put something to kind of hold it in place, a little bit of foam, and then just press, oh, press it slowly and at an angle so that the knife will eventually get through instead of having the skull fly off. Once it's stuck on there, just use one of your kebab sticks and peel it off so you don't burn yourself. How many twists will it take to get the center of the skull? One twist, ah, 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 two twists, ah, ah, three. You can put holes through your corpses at just about any angle to make some cool dynamic stuff. And you can also just use ordinary toothpicks if you find that kebab skewers are a little too big for you. And put multiple pieces on the same skewer, just for funsies. So nice. If you want some larger bases that are maybe a little more stable than the skeleton ones, you can just take some foam and peel it so it looks more like rock. This is actually a little easier because you can pretty quickly stab your skewers through there and then glue them in without having to worry about using the hot knife. 
I put a little bit of glue on the bottom, stick my skewers back in with some glue on the top, and I'm good to go. Now since we don't want just a flat base, we're going to take some of that foam and just kind of peel off little tiny chunks. These will be little bits of rock that we glue onto our bases to make them look a little bit more real. So we've got a little bit of glue on there and I'm just going to keep adding a few little bits here and there to give it a little extra flair. My next step is black bombing the base. So I just get some apple barrel black paint and paint away. Easy peasy. It is dark like the night. Once that's done, I take some army painter mummy robes mixed with a little bit of ochre of just about any color and paint that over each of my corpses. Because this is terrain, we're going to do a quick paint. So we're using strong and soft tone from Army Painter and just painting over parts of each of our corpses. This is going to bring out all of the crevices and make these look a little more gross and real. Usually I use soft tone on the corpse and then I'll use strong tone on my kebab stick to make it feel a little bit weathered. You can also take the weapons and shields and that that come with each of these skeletons and stick them on the base so it feels more like this sort of battlefield and there's still pieces of stuff lying around and paint those like you normally would. If you're confused about dry brushing or putting on a wash or anything in this video, check out my crafter's guide to everything for beginners vid and it should help you out with some of the terms you might not be familiar with. Painting the base is pretty easy. I'm using some game color brown here, but you can use apple barrel brown or really any color brown you want. I start by dry brushing a brown over that black that I've already put on there, and that's sort of my first coat. Then I take, again, any color of green and dry brush that to add some sort of mossy accents. Once those are done, I go in with a gray. Here I'm using an apple barrel gray. Again, any gray will do, but the big thing is to pick up some of the highlighted areas. It's meant to feel kind of like stone and mud and earth, so it fits in a lot of different environments. And the last thing I do is put some white on the major highlight areas. Here I'm using apple barrel white and just dry brushing in some of those segments. To enhance my weathering effect a bit, I'm going to paint a little bit of black onto each of these, kind of at the connection points to the corpses, and then I'll take a little bit of water and fade those out. Finally, my favorite part, the blood. At this point, I'm taking some Tamiya color red and painting it onto the bottoms of the corpses or really anywhere that the spikes are coming through and then painting that down a little bit onto the spike. I love this paint because it's super glossy and it feels like fresh, real blood when you're done painting with it. So there you have it. Everything you need to make some really quick, cheap, and easy corpses for your vampires, your battlefields, your orcish encampments, and of course, your Strad campaigns. Before I go, I wanted to share some really cool dice with you guys. These were sent over to me from Mike Novo, who hand casts all these super cool metal necromancer dice. And I just kind of wanted to show them off because I think they're amazing. I really appreciated him sending these over to me. And I felt like they fit in pretty well with the bony, uh, creepy content for today. So if you want to check him out, uh, I'm putting a link in the description to his Etsy page. If you like this channel and you like the content I'm producing, please do like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a ton. And keep on crafting, everybody.